What's up guys, thanks for tuning in. I'm Josh Mosman and welcome to This Week in MXA, episode number 79, presented to you by O'Neill Racing. Thank you guys for tuning into this video. We got a lot going on in the motocross and supercross world. Cooper Webb just re-signed with KTM. Max Anstey, he just signed with the Firepower Honda team. He's racing this weekend at Redbud. And we have an interview with Marvin Muscan from last Thursday at Glen Helen. Marvin was riding a Husqvarna FC450 Rockstar Edition bike with all white plastics. He had some KTM wheels on there with orange hubs and he was testing suspension with the WP group and the KTM R&D department. He said, I don't have my any plans for next year. I don't know my plans for next year. I'm still working on my details for what's going on next. So I can't talk about that, but I'm willing to do an interview. So we said, great, check out some of the interview right here where we talked to Marvin and he explains his thoughts of outdoors right now, what it's been like for him to watch this season. Also asked him about riding stock bikes. He also talks about just uh, his plans and goals for getting a supercross only contract for 2023 so lots of cool stuff talking with marvin muskan it's going to be interesting to see what happens with him next year but for now let's dive into this interview we got with him at glen helen all right guys we're at glen helen today it is loud and uh some of the track is dusty because the electricity is out here so they don't have any water hoses just the water truck running around but <laughs> we saw marvin out here all white gear and he's on an all white bike today <laughs> and uh, testing with WP, um, trying some suspension sets and stuff like that. So, Marvin, what are you, uh, what are you up to today at Glen Helen? Well, doing some riding basically, you know, uh, it's actually the first time in over 12 years that I'm not doing anything at this time of the year uh, because, uh, yeah, no racing outdoors. So, since I uh, moved to America, I've been racing outdoors for like 12 last year. So. Yeah, I'm here uh, just to do some riding and not uh, losing, um, you know, any kind of fitness. Even though you lose so much in like, I feel like in two weeks after Salt Lake City, two to three weeks, you lose everything. Really? Like it's it's insane. So um, no, just uh, I came already uh, a, a few weeks ago uh, with Ryan Morez and the R and D KTM and riding the two strokes. So it was a lot of fun. And then right now it's on the 450. Nice. Uh, we do have a 125 as well, so nice. it's gonna be fun. Nice, cool. And uh, so, what are you doing? I mean, are you riding for fun, or are you testing, or what are you up to? Yeah, it's it's all it's all fun, and uh, and also helping them if I can, yeah. obviously. So uh, yeah, I got in touch uh, with Ryan Morris, and uh, yeah, I told him I wanted to do some riding, and he says, "Hey, you can join us and uh, and do some uh, some yeah testing for for the R and D." So never done it before. Uh, I always enjoy uh, riding uh, stock bikes, especially you know new ones, and uh, yeah. see the the progress they they're making. So uh, yeah, that's about it. Super fun. What do you think of the? As I got to ride the fuel injected two strokes a couple times now twice, uh, 300 KTM, 250, and 125 KTM, and then the 250, 125 Huskies. We got two days on them, and they're super fun. But what what do you think about those bikes? Well, like I told them, you know, I don't have a lot of experience on two strokes to be honest. Uh, I only raced two strokes when I was 16. Well, that was about one year uh, on 125. So since then. Never uh, raced or, or ride a, a two-stroke, so it was a lot, lot of fun. I had the one, 125, the 250, and the 300. Nice. So uh, yeah, I was super excited. Uh, you know, fuel uh, injected and an electric start on two strokes. I mean, it's pretty crazy. So it's cool to see KTM. You know, uh, yeah, progressing and uh, once again ahead of the competition. You know, uh, other brands. So it, it's cool. Um, it was on the worst like conditions ever because right. it was like a, a day where our KTM rented the track, so basically no water, uh, and it was rough from the day before. Yeah. And on the two strokes, and I actually had fun. Really? So yeah, it tells me that the bike was uh, was good. Nice. That's cool. That's cool. And uh, so you race Supercross. Now you're taking the summer off and uh, working on plans for next year. I, I would assume. So what's it like watching the nationals and watching? Caroli been, has been racing, your old teammate Dungey has been racing, and just seeing uh, the guys that you race with in Supercross, what's it like? Are you following the Nationals closely, watching qualifying in the morning and, and studying, like looking intentionally at it, or are you taking a step back and relaxing a little bit on the weekend? No, I mean, no, I'm watching. I'm watching it for sure. Uh, it was cool to see uh, Antonio Caroli. Uh, we spent some time with him. A couple of weeks, uh, I went to Paula, so hanging out with him, it was awesome. Uh, a little bit of riding as well with him. So, but watching the Nationals, I'm not like deep 
deep into it on the morning in the morning watching lap times and stuff but I do watch the models for sure and it's uh, it's been some it's been some awesome racing uh, and it's not that weird for me not being out there because I, I knew since like last October that my contract was supercross only so yeah. I feel like mentally when you know it's gonna be like that it just it is what it is so I'm uh, now I'm trying to you know, focus on uh, obviously the break but focus on what I can do uh, in the future and uh, I mean in the future like get a new contract and race supercross next year. Nice, super cool. That's that's exciting to hear. Uh, what what are your thoughts on like watching the races? Have you did you go to Paula or anything? Yes, I was at Paula. You were at Paula. So what is it like watching the races on TV, watching them from the sidelines, and then seeing the competition, seeing the tracks? Like, is it does it look harder than you would like you would think, or does it look easier? Or what what is it like being on the sidelines for a guy who's up there mixing it? Yeah, honestly, it looks easy. Yeah. You know, when you watch and you're like, oh man, that looks easy, or uh, I don't know, like. Like, oh, you know, it's not even rough, or, or even if it's rough, when you watch those guys, it, it, it looks easy. So, yeah. definitely, it's hard watching and, and realize how rough the track is, or how rough it is to do 30 minute models like that. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, that, that's all. I mean, I was watching, I enjoyed it. It was uh, it was fun to be out here uh, at Paula with Kiroli and then being on the on the other side, you know, the fence kind of. So it was nice. the first time for me. What do you think? What do you think about Dungey coming back? Like obviously everybody keeps talking about it, but he's, he got better last week in a high point. So what, yeah, what's it like? to be honest, it feels like Dungey never stopped racing. I mean, my opinion on Ryan is uh, he's super healthy, uh, strong physically, and never got injured really in, in his uh, in his career so and this is huge uh, I've always said you know until my body is um, okay I would say to, to be to be racing at a top level I'll be racing uh, but injuries is, uh, is a big part of, of racing and Ryan's retirement was mainly because of racing each year for the championship running number one plate a lot of pressure it was I, under, I mean, I understand I, a little bit. Because I never really been in, in this position, but I've, I've been close to winning championship. But for him, winning championship for so many years, it was tough. Uh, yeah, coming back after so many years is, is uh, crazy. But he was riding here and there, so and he never lost fitness. You know, right? I mean, kind of. Yeah. Ryan is uh, is really healthy and strong physically, so I'm not quite surprised by his performance. Last week I was because he was pushing really hard in high point. But I just feel like the competition and the level is really high right now with the top guys up front. But uh, Ryan, Ryan is just the same out there, right? You know, it uh, feels like he never stopped. Yeah, it's pretty cool to see. Pretty cool to see. All right, and uh, now, now, what's it like riding today? Like Glen Helen. Obviously, we mentioned at the top of the video that the track's pretty dry. But uh, like, how's it feel to be, you know, factory level rider, championship level rider, top? But then you're riding a stock bike, you're on a public day, is it more relaxed? Do you, do you feel different on the bike? Less pressure on your shoulders or, or what, what's it yeah, like? Yeah, I feel quite different. Uh, first of all, because it's stock bike, so suspensions are a lot different. Uh, but I'm enjoying it in, in a different way, that's for sure. And, and technique-wise too, the bike, those bikes, the stock bikes compared to our factory bikes are, are quite a bit different with the suspensions and stiffness. So I feel like Maybe I can play around a little bit more on, on the stock bike because of the, the movement of the suspensions yeah. and uh, and obviously I'm going out there and then if I want to do two laps, I do two laps. If I want to do 10, I do 10. Yeah. Uh, but one thing for sure I'm doing is down the big hill when it's full of dust, I'm rolling the throttle. I, I'm, not, I'm just not pushing, you know, and so it's not like I, I would have been going crazy if, if I was racing, but at the same time, if you're doing models, you, you're trying yeah. to, to push the lap times. Yeah. So. That's also the part where you have to be careful when you're riding on a public track. Yeah. So yeah, today it's all about uh, giving a little bit of feedback, feedback to those guys and doing some riding. Okay, last question. Are you base training right now or like what's your week like in a gym or a road biking or are you just having fun riding? To be honest, I have zero uh, program right now. Uh, I just went on the bike ride yesterday. Um, so that's about it. And then today, a couple laps. Um, but yeah, like I said, you lose so so quick when you're not every day doing cardio or, or riding or going to the gym. So it would be good, you know, in the next couple of weeks if I know, you know, if I'm racing next year, that'll be good so I can plan ahead and um, 
It's either testing for the team, for Supercross already, and then uh, and knowing or like in October or something, get ready for the full, for a full season Supercross. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you for your time and excited to see you racing again. Yep. Thanks. <laughs> Sweet. Next up, we got to talk about Cooper Webb. This guy just re-signed for the 2023 Supercross season with the Red Bull KTM team. Cooper is a two-time 450 Supercross champion. And after the 2022 Supercross season, he decided to take the summer off to heal up from multiple injuries that were kind of nagging him through the Supercross season and uh, just rest and recover. He also has a baby on the way. It's been fun watching him uh, riding in North Carolina and riding back east. He even did an off-road race this past weekend that he posted about on Instagram. So cool to see uh, Cooper Webb having fun on his motorcycle this summer and it'll be interesting to see what he does in 2023. Win the Supercross championship um, doing Supercross only. Is he going to decide to race outdoors mid-year? Because racing outdoors you really have to decide that maybe February or March uh, to start ramping up your outdoor training mid Supercross. So I personally hope to see him at Supercross and motocross in 2023. We also got some news for Max Anstey. Max was the third rider on the Rocky Mountain KTM team this Supercross series that uh, was also injured. He also struggled with injuries this year, but he was the third rider who hadn't announced yet what his plans were for 2022, really the rest of this season. Joey Savaggi went to Kawasaki, Shane McElrath, he went to Rockstar Hasvarna, and now Max Anstey has announced that he's gonna be riding for the Firepower Honda team. He's gonna do Red Bud this weekend, uh, Southwick and Millville after that and uh, then we'll see where he goes um, it sounds like he'll be signed with the team for 2023 as well so good stuff from Max Anstey I know he also uh, they stated in the press release that he's looking forward to the Red Bud Motocross of Nations as well for Team Great Britain and I uh, know that racing this weekend at Red Bud will be good prep for Motocross of Nations later this year also if you guys haven't heard the Firepower Honda team that Max Anstey is riding for now is previously the Muckoff Honda team that Justin Brown Rayton rode for in 2021. And before that, it was the Penwright Honda team in 2020. And Yariv Konsky, the owner of that team that is now called Firepower Honda, he also owns a Honda CR500 two-stroke that was built by Nathan Alexander. Nathan used to work for Yariv. Now Nathan works for the Motor Concepts Honda team with Mitchell Oldenburg there. Uh, Nathan is a good buddy of mine. He put a lot of uh, his heart and soul into this Honda CR500 from 1994. We just posted our video on it yesterday. Yesterday. We also have more 502 Shook videos coming out in the future, so stay tuned to our website and YouTube channel for that. Also, this past weekend, I did some racing out at Glen Helen and Josh Fout, MXA test rider, he raced with me. Did some racing at SRA, the Grand Prix off-road racing. It was a 45 minute moto, 100 degree heat, pretty brutal, um, but just good training for uh, getting ready for the last couple nationals. I plan to race Washougal and Paula, so gotta get a sweat on. Uh, here's a couple clips from Glen Helen on Sunday. Also, we have a little service update on the 2023 Husqvarna's, and we assume the 20, 2023 KTMs that we're gonna be riding here starting this week. Spokes are coming loose and they're coming loose fast. Check out this video. Fourth time this weekend in two days that we've, that we've gone through and tightened that particular spoke. Not counting all the other times. We just tightened it after Paula, Lake Elsinore, yep. Thursday, so Glen Helen. We're looking at seven to ten times on a five hour bike. So. And what's the difference between this bike and the Rockstar Edition and then last year's bikes? Uh, for me, the, like the spokes. Oh, the spokes? They're worse than last year. They're, they say, claim a new spoke nipple. They, they just don't hold. Gotcha. Uh, they're worse than last year. Last year wasn't good either, but this is another level Seems of Seems like it's worse bad. so far. Yep. And compared to the Rockstar Edition, so the, with the factory edition wheels? Not so many problems, but uh, doing Stapleton spokes at the Hangtown National, but after qualifying, after practice, after qualifying, every, it was loose every time. Crazy. Not, not just one, but three to four on each wheel. And that's what Dennis tried it now. Yep. Got the asterisk there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, guys, thank you for tuning into this video. Uh, Red Bud Nationals coming up this weekend, so check out motocrossactionmag.com for news, race results, point standings, and stuff like that headed into Red Bud. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel and click the bell button to get notifications whenever we release a new video. And if you haven't seen them yet, click the thumbnails now for some of our more recent uploads.